Hi, my name is Sarita. And my name is Rena. We are both past patients with Mexico Bariatric Center and we are here to break the stigma of having weight loss surgery in Tijuana, Mexico. We will be covering all things bariatric to help you get the most out of this weight loss journey. Hi friends! Hello everyone. Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to Can You Stomach This? Can you stomach this? Well, <laughs> speaking of stomach this, yeah. um, let's talk about the stomach yeah. and the pouch and yes. what you can stomach or more so how much you can stomach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for catching my sentence there. I totally choked up. Um, so yeah, let's talk about what you can stomach or how much you can stomach. Exactly. Um, so listen, we're going to talk about the pouch reset. Yes. Right? We are. And when to do a pouch reset. But uh, let's, to get there, you got to do the pouch test. Right. Yep. So, Sarita, what is a pouch test? Let's just so, get into that. Like, what is it? So, a pouch test is a test to see how big your pouch is. And okay. <laughs> okay, so I think Sarita's nervous because have you ever done the pouch no, test before? I have never done the pouch test and we're doing one live tonight. You've done it. I have. I have never revision. done it. And so I'm kind of nervous about it. Even though almost seven years, yeah, no, no, no testing of test. the pouch. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of anxious. And la an on camera. Yeah. And on camera. Yeah. There's no no taking it back. Yeah. So we're testing to see how big our pouch is. We're going to do it. We're going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, let's talk, before we get that part of it, let's talk about, because you know, eating on camera is really weird to me. Is it weird to you? No. It is to me. I want to do a cooking show. We should do a cooking show, but. I would like to do a cooking show. I, you can be the camera tester, because I don't know, maybe I'll get more comfortable with that. But um, let's talk about when and why mm -hmm. you should, you should do a pouch test. Like, right. What, what would you do that for? So maybe your portions have gotten larger. It happens. Maybe you don't feel constrict or restriction when you're consuming more than nine ounces per meal. Hopefully you're weighing your food. <laughs> so you definitely should be weighing your food yes. from like day one. Right. Um, well, phase three, but or yeah, even in pre-op because we oh, say yeah, eight, six to yeah. seven That's ounces. That's true. Day one. Know? Okay. So so that's you, important. Yeah, it is important. Mm -hmm. um, you may have had weight gain or a very long-term stall. So okay. I get asked this question every day on Facebook and text messages, you know, um, and, and I always offer, you know, the link to test your pouch and then I yeah. send the reset. So we're going to dive into that. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Um, sometimes people say, you know, how did I stretch my pouch? Right. Like, how did that happen? Right. A lot of times they'll think, oh, I ate too much at one meal. Did I stretch it? And it's like, or no. I ate something unhealthy. Right. Like one unhealthy thing. Like, no, that is not going to happen. No. You can stretch your pouch by small excess amounts over and over and over. Right. Meaning like every, every time you eat. Every day. You eat too much. You're eating until you feel full, mm -hmm. not until the weight scale, like not your scale you weigh your body, but your food scale right. says you've had enough, right. um, which is important because right. food is fuel, not pleasure. We're not supposed to eat until we feel mm -hmm. super full. We're supposed to eat what our body says we need. Right. And another um, thing, you know, about your pouch Drinking and eating at the same time can definitely stretch your pouch. Yeah, so how do you avoid that, mm -hmm. Serena? What's it called? Follow the 30-minute rule. The 30-minute rule. Yeah. And that's hard because, you know, when we're children and we're learning to eat real food, we're handed a sippy cup when we're mm -hmm. handed a plate. Right. And so it's very hard. That is, like, probably the hardest mm -hmm. habit to break. Yeah. Um, especially if you're pre-op, you're thinking, I'll never figure this out. Right. Um, Post-op is a little easier, but just... Try not to get back to that because can you do it? Yeah. Uh, sure, but you're also stuffing a lot in there when you do. Yes. So if you're putting, uh, let's say you're supposed to be eating six to eight ounces of food, 
but you are also consuming 12 ounces of liquid, well then where's the food going to go? Right. Right. So that's a lot going into your tiny little pouch. Pushing it all down. It is. It yeah, is. It's too much. And at, over time that can mm -hmm. stretch you out. Now some stretching is normal. Yes. Um, you will never, ever, ever have the restriction that you had with the virgin surgery, though. meaning in that first couple months. You'll right. never, ever have that. Um, if you do have that for years and years and years, you are a rare exception. Mm -hmm. um, it's just not, that's not normal. You should definitely have some, what feels like stretching to mm -hmm. you. It should go out a right. little more and start off real tough. Stomach some muscle, muscles, right. it right. does stretch out. Um, and so by the end of the first year, uh, right? You yeah. should be... If, yes, at the end of the first year, you yep. should average between 2.5 and 9 ounces. 2.5 ounces in a meal sounds like not enough food, but mm -hmm. it's the consistency because mm -hmm. meat is thick. Meat. Right. I can weigh out 3 ounces of chicken and that'll make me full. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, beef to me is even thicker than chicken. Right. Yep, so... Uh, that's where you should be two and a half to nine and that's going to depend on the consistency just because you can eat three ounces of chicken only doesn't mean that you can't eat nine ounces of vegetables because you could they're not as thick right. um, but by the end of that second year you should be kind of looking at like five to nine ounces right. on average. average you don't really want to go over nine of right. pretty much anything um, even thinner thinner things right and that Listen, when you when you get used to weighing out your food, and we're going to show you what eight ounces looks like in a minute, it's a lot of food. It's a lot. We it, already, you know, we were scooping that. out potatoes and cottage cheese, <laughs> thinking, "What in the world?" Yeah. Speaking of scooping out um, potatoes and cottage cheese, <laughs> that's kind of how you do the test, right? Right. But before we get to that, I do want to say that um, if your pouch stretches out and you are consuming a little more than some people, you know, on average five to nine, if you're averaging up there like six, eight, eight all the time, it's okay, it may, it's natural and it may mm -hmm. not be something that you've done wrong. Right. Um, so don't beat yourself up, uh, we're all different people. Start weighing your food. Just weigh your food. Weigh your, weigh your food, food so it's you so know. It's so important and keep yeah. track of your food. Keep yeah. track of everything that you consume. You'll hear us both say that Liquids all the time. Liquids and solids, yes. Track, 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 track. And you mentioned it, tracking mm -hmm. liquids. People mm -hmm. think, I don't have to track my liquids, but yes, you do. Ooh, you have to. Yep. All right, so how to do this pouch test. How are we going to do it? Okay, so... What's the instructions? So basically what you do is you get a kitchen scale. Okay, this is the Renfo kitchen scale. So mm -hmm. you are going to weigh out eight ounces of mashed potatoes or cottage cheese. Um, personally, I don't really care for cottage cheese, so I'm doing the potatoes, she's doing the cottage cheese. I like cottage cheese occasionally. I have to be in a mood for it, so right. today I'm good with we're, it. We're hungry. For purposes of this video, <laughs> we're hungry. We haven't I'm... eaten for several hours. And, True. you know, we wanted to get Six accurate Six and seven results. years post-op, you do get those. Right. You will right. be feeling some hunger hormones. So, what we're going to do is we are going to do a live pouch test. And we're going to eat until we're full, and then we're going to measure what is remaining in our bowl, and that mm -hmm. will give us an accurate... Yep. So you have to tear out your scale. You don't want to weigh the bowl, right? So we did use these, and um, by the way, they weigh 0.25. We weighed them all, so they're all the same. <laughs> they're all the same, and um, we're going to eat our foods. Um, so I have potatoes and I had to heat them up and cover them with blood <laughs> because I am not eating cold potatoes. So she's doing the cottage cheese, which um, is cold. Yeah. And I'm doing Kevin's mashed potatoes. I which, chose break some. Right. So hers is cold, mine's hot. Serena likes that Kevin's brand. If you haven't explored it, I you really should. do. It's a paleo. I know it's available at Publix. I don't yeah. know where else you get it. But. You can get it at um, Sam's, Costco. You can, you can pretty much find it everywhere. Talk about tracking. Let's talk about choice oh. here. Okay, so <laughs> so <laughs> mine has two grams of protein per serving. And there's four servings in here, so that's four ounces, two grams of protein. And it also has nine gra or 14 grams fat, so that's not very healthy. 
That's <laughs> not a very healthy choice. Compared to what she's having. Okay, you already read the label. Do you remember what it said? It was It's a four servings per t- container, half a cup. Um, so we're doing... Um, eight ounces. So. Eight ounces. So that's a whole cup, mm-hmm. which would be... What was it like? Where'd it go? It's right there. Down there. There. Okay, there's 26 grams of protein in my cottage cheese choice compared to four. (laughs) So, okay. Oh, not to mention the carbs. I have six Um, grams. Where are you at with carbs? Well, I don't have my carbs. I'm not 12 because it's 19 carbs. And that's double? Yeah, double. double. Oh, no, times two. Yeah, 19 times two. Is that 19? Yes, but okay. times two, so that's 38. That's, wow, I did not choose well, but it's okay. This is for it's, testing purposes. Testing if purposes you don't only. Like I would cheese. not eat eight ounces of potatoes on it. Any I don't day. know if you can eat eight ounces of potatoes anyway. Yeah, so, this is so weird. I don't really like eating on camera. Okay. It, oh, by yeah, the way, good. you're just supposed to eat consistently, right? So right. So we can still talk while we eat. Well, I'll eat. You talk. Actually, mm. can we just like not talk right now? Y'all don't want to watch us eat. Mm-mm. It's good. It's good though. My salt and pepper and cookie. You know, I said I was okay with this cottage cheese thing, but I'm not so sure. It's potatoes. You know, I am getting full. Me too. Okay. What if my nose is running? Oh dear. What? We're not really that full yet, but I'm getting there. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, that was a lot. Mm-hmm. I swear if I stand up, I won't be as full. I really believe that. Okay. It's the weirdest thing. Well, I'm full. I'm going to have one more bite. Okay. You're full. I really am full. Okay. All right. Look, I can feel it. It's not going down as easy. Do you yeah. Food yeah. Down? It's like when you feel it start sitting here, yeah. and you're done. I'm full. All right. Hold on. <laughs> she. You're full. I'm full. Mm-hmm. You did it. Mm-hmm. I'm full. I think there's probably two ounces in here. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. I am full. Like, I feel it. All right, so... How do you know you're full? Because I can feel... I can just, like, feel, like, right here. Mm -hmm. It's just full. I feel it because it, like, don't go down. Yeah, it's, like, up here right now. Yeah, like, it just... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wait, you gotta tear the... Do do the bowl first. The empty one. Oh. There you go. And then what? Oh, wait, no, that don't make sense. I can push this. Oh, way. yes, it does, because now it's zero. So okay. now add the bowl. Okay, so I probably ate a spoon too much, but I have one ounce, or excuse me, 1.15 ounces left, and I can really feel the restriction right now, like uncomfortably. Okay. So that's what, six and a half ounces maybe? Oh, we're almost okay, seven. So, I mean, almost seven. Yeah, I mean, that's when I meal prep. 6.85 is Put yours on there be. while the tear is on. Oh, yeah. this. Oh, yeah, gosh. so. Uh, yeah. Oh, you ate less than me. 1.7. Okay, so, so you ate 6.3 ounces. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hey, so we're good. We did good. Ooh, I feel full. Well, I do feel full. I feel it sitting. Uh, okay, okay, so I probably ate too many too many bites, and I'm. I'm you know how I know I'm full? Did burping. you just see that? Mm-hmm. I burp when I'm full. I burp. Yeah. Okay. Is your nose running? No, but I'll start the. Hiccup. Are you gonna hiccup? Maybe she does hiccup when she's full. I do full. hiccup, and I burp when I'm full. Okay, so um, that wasn't horrible. I don't think it was horrible. No. It's nice to know where you sit because, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes you begin to wonder, like, yeah. where am I at, right? Okay. And, yeah. So, let's talk about the results, right? So, <laughs> you do the test and let's see where you, what you, what your results are. And so, um, oh. 
see here we go mm -hmm. maybe it wasn't a good idea to do that on camera <laughs> yeah, i feel i feel like we we could have done six ounces i feel like we're i on think track. i pushed it a little bit i i for sure did because i can feel it now yeah so i think that i was starving so doing the test i'll tell you this you were you hit i'm kind starving of um, so doing the test, I'll tell you this, be consistent with what you eat. And when you start getting to like, you've ate half the bowl, so you know, you've eaten like half, like, especially if you're far out, if you're really kind of new in fresh post up and you're doing this within that first year, slow down a couple bites and eat kind of slow. Because like I just said, I kind of, I felt it go down and I, I started it. slowing down and <laughs> now it's I'm starting to get it's a little here. bit. Oh yeah. It's right here. Yeah. So anyway, um, I apologize. I'm sorry. It's the reality of post-op, right? This is all part of bariatric life. We're real people, and we have real post-op things. So we, do. we are always real with you. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about your results, right? Just taking the test, be sure to eat consistency consistently, but not too fast, not too slow, and um, make sure... Mm -hmm. um, when you start getting there, just kind of give it a minute to go down before you take that next bite. Yeah. All right. So uh, we saw how much we ate, uh, just under seven ounces each. Mm -hmm. And um, but I feel like we we should have done six. Like we could. I think I could have realistically, stopped. like I think six was our limit. But we yeah. took an extra bite, which is like an ounce. But now we know how big our pouch is. Oh yeah, I got a six ounce. I got a six and a half ounce pouch. And yeah, I'm I would say seven years post op, so I do still feel the restriction every yeah. day. Yeah, and my sleeve was runny nose just happened. Um, so my sleeve was uh, almost six years ago when I did that revision. They didn't touch my sleeve. I still have the same exact mm -hmm. um, pouch, so uh, we know where that's at. So let's talk about the results. What do you do after you do this test? Where do you go? What's next? Let's say you did this test and you ate all of that eight ounces. And you were still hungry. And you're still hungry. Or you could just eat the eight ounces. You ate the eight ounces or you ate it all and you just didn't feel full. So your your test result would be do the 10-day reset. 10-day reset. Get back on track. Yeah. Um, do the 10-day. And then if it was less than eight ounces but greater than six, Right. Do the so, five day reset. Yeah. Our we our nutritionist recommends that you do the five day. And then um so let's say you got less than six ounces. Wait a minute. Did six. we get greater than six? Maybe we should do a five day oh no. We should do the five day <laughs> reset. Before the holidays. Yes. Then we we'll should. Be we detoxed, should do it. And yeah. then that way we can say we did it, right? Yes. Uh, restart this it is almost holiday time. Okay, so yeah, two weeks. Let's do the five day. So weigh your food for long term success every for sure. day. Always weigh your food. If you Anything. ate less than six ounces, then great. You have a really good pouch size, right? Um, uh, you're you're on track. You're doing well. But listen, if you're not weighing your food, start doing it before you get to the point that eight ounce pouches. Yes, because uh, again, you. consistently, if you eat too much, it's going to stretch your pouch. We don't yeah, want that for sure. So. Um, I want to say too, let's talk about the pressure receptors inside of your stomach. Mm -hmm. The what? The pressure receptors, right? This is like, this is I wish, I wish I had known this before I had sleeve. I didn't know this until after mm -hmm. my revision, but it's something I definitely wish I knew mm -hmm. before I had surgery. Me too. Or immediately. After. I wish everyone knew about it. I think that I it, really try to tell people, yeah. but I just can't, mm -hmm. I, always, I don't get to everybody, I guess, you know, but yeah. Um, it's interesting. So one of the things that we say, weigh food, weigh food, weigh food, weigh food, it's weigh your food. And mm -hmm. it's important because, um, first of all, we want you to have long-term success. We mm -hmm. want you um, to go the distance. Right? right. We want you to meet your goal weight. We want you to maintain your goal weight. We don't want you to have another surgery. We, right. we want you, you know, to have a new way of life and create healthy habits going forward. Without regain. Right. So um, inside of our stomach, there's these finger-like lining mm -hmm. uh, receptors. And um, they, when you press on them, um, they can lose their feeling. But what they do is they tell you, hey, you're full. So when your mm -hmm. food gets in there and you, it's 
fans out and touches them, then it says, hey, you're full. Stop. Stop touching me. It tells your brain, stop. Mm -hmm. And so as you eat more and more, um, it they kind of go numb. And Mine are numb right now. You can't stop. No, they're not. <laughs> okay. You can't stop um, eating, um, and so you can't stop touching them. And so the more you eat to fullness instead of by weight, the more you're going to press on them. Mm -hmm. And over time, they'll go numb, and that'll make you think my pouch has stretched out. Mm -hmm. um, but and the reality is that those receptors have grown um, desensitized. Is really right. the right word way to say that I think um, but uh, you can't I say you can't get the feeling back but you kind of can you, like I said earlier you'll never have that restriction you had mm -hmm. immediately post-op but um, if your pouch uh, you can stretch your pouch but also what's more common is um, desensitizing that and so what happens is um, if and it was explained to me this way so I want to explain it this way if you put a cold piece of ice on the back of your hand uh, it goes numb. Mm -hmm. It hurts, first of all, like food touching the line. And it says, mm -hmm. stop, get that off of me. And then um, you leave it there and it goes numb. And that area no longer says stop. It just stops right. telling you right. to stop because uh, you're not listening, right? Mm -hmm. And so then if you take that piece of ice off, then um, you will get the feeling back. Eventually, it'll come back and you can feel it again. But you can't stop eating and you can't stop drinking, so you can't stop pressing on those receptors. But you can do reset, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that reset. Um, resetting, <laughs> and, and if you're drinking um, instead of food, so liquid is not as um, dense, so right. it's not putting as much pressure. You're not really any restriction on liquid. Right, no. You can, as a mm -hmm. matter of fact, you should drink a lot. Like right. You should drink half your weight in ounces, minimum 64. Right. If you're a 300 pound person, you should be drinking 150 ounces a day, right? Mm -hmm. For weight loss. That's mm -hmm. weight loss mm -hmm. water. Um, but the 10 day pouch reset does help for a couple of reasons. One, the liquid part of that is going to help you uh, get some of that feeling back. I personally sometimes do my own little reset of uh, like if I feel like I'm eating too much on a regular basis. I'll just do thick liquids for like a mm -hmm. week. And then yeah. phase myself back into regular foods the next week. So, and to me, that helps me like, oh, now I feel full like I should. Mm -hmm. Or, you know. But I think this reset is good um, for kind of like detoxing. Yeah, for sure. And it's a quick detox. Mm -hmm. And it, it gets you back on track to weight loss. And yeah. it's not going to shrink your stomach long term. No reset diets do that. But mm -hmm. again, the whole detox. Yeah, know? it does definitely. Yeah. And so, you know. No caffeine, 64 ounces of water, or the um, sugar-free clear liquids, just like post-op, mm -hmm. you know, phase one and um, pre-op on the clear liquids. Um, follow that 30-minute rule. Super important. Do not skip any meals or shakes listed. No mm -hmm. additional snacks other than what is listed. What's again, on the list only. Right. You're trying to detox. Um, protein shakes, uh, this is always our criteria, must have 20 grams or more protein and less than 5 grams of sugar. Yep, so that kind of sums up all the must with it. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a high calorie, a high, sorry, low calorie, <laughs> high protein regimen yes. that's going to kind of get you back to that right. metabolic set point for your body. Right. And so um, it's very much similar to the post op diet, but it's kind of like the fast track version. Very fast track. It's the fast back <laughs> track version of post-op so uh and to talk a little bit more about that sarita so what is day one on the clear on uh, sorry on the 10 day reset look okay. like sorry so, so day I'm full one and i'm a little distracted right. yeah. <laughs> day one is clear liquids only so we all know what that is you know we've been doing it for pre-op and we did it post-op and you know if you go onto our website we do have the link for the 10 days so yeah it'll give you and just a Quick reiteration, broth, yeah. sugar-free jello, yeah. sugar-free popsicles, right. Water. that list of things. Yeah. 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 Yep. Sugar-free everything. And that's just one day, right? That's just, just one the day. the first day. Yeah. And that's um, probably going to be your hardest day because, yeah. you know, no caffeine. No, Yeah, no caffeine. No caffeine. I have seen people walk themselves into this. So they kind of titrate down to it and then start it. But so I would if have you to need do to that. do that. 
do what you got to do. Like yeah. do what you got to do to get yeah. yourself there. Um, so you get that one day of clear liquids in and then what? And then day two and three is going to be thick liquids. Okay. So on these two days, you must drink three protein shakes and you can also have as many servings of the magic uh, weight loss soup, which is also on our website. That's really good. Uh -huh, but you want to space it out every two to three hours. So mm -hmm. you don't want to like you know, drink a whole bunch and you want to space it out. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, you also want to um, do your 64 ounces of water or sugar-free beverages. Same thing, clear liquids. Yeah, and you know, eating every three hours <laughs> is important. I tell people mm -hmm. every day, food is fuel. Food is fuel. Right. Putting gas in your car. And you should eat every three hours to constantly fuel your body throughout the day. Um, I don't eat every three hours. I know. And you're doing really well. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's some days when I don't eat. Today, I didn't eat anything until 3 p.m. Don't do that. But that is not something I do every day. But no, don't do that. I just got really busy. and Yeah. yeah. So don't, it do, don't do that. Don't, don't do what I did. And if you do... Start over. Right. And tomorrow's a new day. Right. Tomorrow's a new day. Yeah. You just can't have those every day. So day four and five are going to be yeah. soft solids. Um, you're going to have three protein shakes, unlimited magic weight loss soup. Again, recipe on our website. Mm -hmm. And you will choose two servings out of the soft solid protein options, which could be a half a cup of cottage cheese, which she just had. I just had um, almost a whole cup. Right. Six ounces of Greek yogurt, um, Oikos triple zero or ratio keto. Let hey, me... that ratio keto, listen. Those are good choices. I have always had the Oikos triple zero. Like, that's just my yogurt go to. Yeah. But um, somewhere I was at, I, I, I don't like fruity flavors. I used to love berry, but I don't mm -hmm. anymore. And so now I like the plain or vanilla. I like coffee or yogurt, your chobani. Oh, yeah. Just coffee. I mean, I love it. I, I do eat it every day. Yeah, that actually sounds good. But um, the, the ratio, if you haven't tried the ratio, you should. I love it. I think it's great. It's um, neat. It checks all the boxes. Yeah. Um, so other choices here would be a half a cup of beans, and you can do whole or refried. Um, two scrambled eggs or two poached eggs, not both. I mean, you can do one scrambled and one poached, but don't eat four eggs. Yeah. Um, four ounces of tofu. And that is your soft solids. And that is for the four to five days. Yeah. Day yeah. four and day five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Soft solids. Yeah. And of course, if you have questions, <laughs> ask the nutritionist. Right. Even if you're a little, you know, out from your journey, just mm -hmm. ask her. She'll yeah. help you. She's always um, there. Or ask Sarita. Uh, She'll help you. I know. I yeah. don't. Yeah. I mean, I... I you know, I give out this information every day. For sure. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, so you got through the fourth and fifth day of mm -hmm. soft solids, and now mm -hmm. here we are at day six, right? right. So uh, we're going to group day six or ten together, mm -hmm. So and, and long term. So even, right. um, you know, this is a slow thing. So do this six or ten, and mm -hmm. this is your long term portion. So right. what do we do in that portion? Sarita? So for days six to ten, you can do three protein shakes. If you cannot stomach these protein shakes, you can substitute um, the following options for two of the shakes. So that would leave you one shake, and then these options I'm about to tell you: uh, twenty almonds. You can do a Greek yogurt with up to a fourth a cup of berries. Berries are low in natural sugar. Um, you can do two eggs, scrambled, poached, or hard-boiled. Um, two meals consisting of four ounces of lean protein, chicken, fish, turkey, pork loin, shellfish, tofu, or beans. Uh, one tablespoon of olive oil. Two ounces of non-starchy vegetables. And again, mm -hmm. unlimited magic weight loss soup. Yeah. And all of this is on our website. You can print it out. You and, can. I mean, you know, save it. Save it. If you're a phone savvy person, save right. it. If you're right. an old, if you you're more of the old fashioned, fashion, you know, print it. Put it on your refrigerator. Whatever works I like to for you. Yep, I do. Yep, and uh, I save things or make lists on my phone because mm -hmm. I, I don't keep paper with me all the time. So I have I, it up on my computer phone. constantly because I'm yeah. constantly posting the link in Facebook groups or 
texting it, you know, to patients who ask me questions. I want to talk about the, this is random, okay, but, you know, in this portion, you can do two eggs, right? So two mm -hmm. scrambled mm -hmm. or two hard boiled. I can't eat two scrambled eggs. That's a lot of eggs. I can do poached eggs. Yeah. But not scrambled and hard boiled, no. The weird thing is that I could eat two boiled eggs. Like, mm. two boiled oh. eggs wouldn't fill me up the way two scrambled eggs would fill me scrambled up. Scrambled eggs don't sit right with me, and I keep trying them, but they just don't work. Poached eggs? I love scrambled eggs. I'm okay with poached. I eat one, like, almost every day. Oh, I wish I could A couple of times a week. I used to. It's weird to me that you can eat more scrambled eggs, I mean, less scrambled egg mm -hmm. than hard boiled. I, it's just the consistency. It's the consistency. It just yeah. sits very heavy. Yeah, it's the same amount of <laughs> nutritional value it's just actually i think the hard bowl's healthier for you so you don't add like yeah you're not oil. adding like you know butter yeah, or olive it. oil or whatever to cook yeah. it mm -hmm. and listen again if you haven't tried the magic weight loss soup mm -hmm. just do it yeah. like it does have some things in it that a lot of people don't like like mushrooms and you stuff tweak it. Just, just don't put that in it yeah omit what you don't like if you don't like a lot of things and you might end up with like a cabbage soup or right like a carrot yeah. soup whatever it is you don't like but just tweak it to what you like yeah don't it's, don't it's fine add potatoes but if you want to omit something you can omit something non-starchy um, vegetables yeah so if you complete this 10 day um this 10 day reset diet mm -hmm. um it's gonna it should right it should help you um get that lifestyle change you know, when you go into it, have that mindset, I'm going to do this right this right. time. Like, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to just kind of start over mm -hmm. so that you have that long-term success. And at the end of the day, um, you are your biggest accountability person, mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. should hold yourself accountable. Um, can you keep doing these resets over and over and over? Yeah, but, I mean, how far is that really going to get you, Just right? do it once and get back on track. Yeah. So, so really, most important, weigh your food. Get a food scale. If you don't have one, track your food. Apps. I love very tastic. Yeah, we have apps for that. You can scan things, and it just it's so easy. Every, it's so easy. So easy. If you're a paper person and want to journal it on paper, do that. Write it down. Yeah. yeah, or if you have, like, notes on your phone, I mean, you know, you can do that, too. Just keep up with it, because mm -hmm. sometimes you don't know what you're eating at the end of the day. Like, Lose especially track. if you're a snacker, if you catch yourself snacking, mm. um, yes, you can have a serving of... Um, like almonds. Yeah, almonds, but if next thing... 20 almonds is a serving, right? Yes. It's on average 15 to 20. So next thing you know, months. you got another serving. Well, next thing serving. you know, you've <laughs> ate, like, a whole bag 60 almonds in a day <laughs> that well that's not one serving that's, yeah, that's gonna be yeah. three servings so yeah. um, keep up with it and um you know if you, you're just struggling find yourself an accountability partner mm -hmm. um if you're shy um i don't know what to tell you but get in the facebook group yeah. because in that facebook group there is somebody where you are right even if they don't admit it out loud be that person mm -hmm. that steps out and says, mm -hmm. hey, I'm struggling. I need to do a reset. Right. Will somebody do it with me? Start a group chat. Reset together. Right. And there's um, no stupid questions. There's just, you know, if you need help, ask for it. Just I, ask. I am always on that Facebook page moderating. Mm -hmm. And I constantly post links. I'll, I'll reach out to you on Messenger. I'll call you. Serena's a great accountability partner. And I'm mm -hmm. going to be honest. Like, I don't think she could be everybody's accountability partner because... That would be hard, but if you really need help, she really does help hold you accountable. She's to slap the spoon out of your hand, friend. Right. Or hit the back on the group that you shouldn't be reading. Right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but she she is that friend who's not afraid to say, um, mm -hmm. what, let's get to the real problem. Here. Yes, and it, it's usually um, a lot more detailed than... Than what than, we want to admit. Right, and it's okay to admit that. That's what we're here for. Yeah, and you know, if your Facebook's not your cup of tea, um, look for local support groups, um, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be local bariatric support groups, local um, overeaters food, anonymous, yeah, like food addiction um, groups. Sometimes your primary care provider, you know, they have local support groups for their bariatric division or 
whatever. Something, yeah. yeah. Um, like Kaiser, you know, they have bariatric and they have support group and, you know, there, there's so many, um, there's so many things out there that you could, um, look for, for support. Yeah. And if you find yourself just continuing to choose bad habits, mm-hmm. don't be afraid to ask for therapy, you know, go to therapy. Find I was in therapy. Find therapy. I know. Mm-hmm. I say all the time, Sarita attributes her success of a hundred percent of excess fat loss, which mm-hmm. is not super common. Most people don't lose a hundred percent excess fat. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, on average between all the surgeries, it's about 60 to 80 that's all of them, not one, but, um, it's not common for any weight loss surgery to help you lose a hundred percent excess fat. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, Sarita says all the time she attributes that to coupling her journey with therapy and fitness training. Yeah. Strength, strength training, training yoga. Yeah. You, I mean, you definitely have to exercise. You, mm-hmm. It's not magic and it's, it's hard work and I work at it every day. But I want to say, too, if you're one of those people who is doing all the things and you're still not at that 100% fat loss, don't beat yourself up. Our bodies are all different. Right. We're all different. Do your best. Right. Um, like I said earlier, the bottom line is that at the end of the day, you have to hold yourself accountable. You have to have some tough conversations with yourself sometimes. And you know what? You've come this far. You made yes. the decision to have surgery. You, you've come this far. You know, don't <clears throat> do what you can for yourself. Live right. your best life. Right. It's your journey. Yes, live your best life. Live your best life, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my resets work for me. They're not this 10-day reset per se, so find what works for you. If just drinking liquids a couple of days works for you, drink liquids a couple yeah. of days. So whatever works for you. You know what works for you. Yeah, this this reset does help people. It does work, but, you know, it do what you need to do sometimes and uh, but we have enjoyed talking about resets right yes and we have enjoyed our cottage cheese and mashed potatoes we learned something new i was actually afraid that i was gonna exceed that like i know i, I was my terrified food, but i was <laughs> she was I, I i weigh my food but i thought oh no all the way to the store and back she's like oh no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> i'm nervous i'm anxious yeah it's, it's all good yeah um but we we uh we were su- we surprised ourselves with our we little did. six and a half ounce pouches, right? Yeah. With our many years of uh, yeah. tiny tummies. Yeah. But um, anyway, like I always say, drop us a comment. Mm-hmm. Um, we do want to hear from you. We do care about you. We may not know you personally, um, but uh, we are always wanting to learn about other people's journeys. Right. Um, we learn from you so we can help other people right. um, because we can only speak to our own experiences unless we learn about others. Right. And... Um, Email us if you don't want to drop a comment because you don't want people to know. Or find me on Facebook. Yeah, we are. She's on Facebook. We are both on Facebook. Yep, she's a little easier to find, but I'm on there. So find us uh, on there. I know I'm in the groups with my Mm -hmm. Rena MVC. Mm -hmm. So um, reach out, send an email, drop a comment, uh, whatever you want to do. But uh, either way, have a great day and um, do a reset if you need to. Bye, friends. Bye, friends. (laughs) If any questions or want to share your bariatric weight loss journey, you can call or text us at 480-999-4826 or send an email to podcast at mexicobariatriccenter.com. You can also follow Mexico Bariatric Center on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Keep in mind, these are the opinions of the host. The views represented do not reflect or define the values of Mexico Bariatric Center. This podcast is sponsored by Emerge Bariatrics and Mexico Bariatric Center. Please visit MexicoBariatricCenter.com for more information.